Hello and welcome to Ellen Ruth Soap. It's Ellen back here and I've got a busy day in the studio so we're jumping right into this soap today. I'm making cold brew coffee soap. Um, and so I've got all my oils and butters melted here ready to get going with my additives So let me tell you what's going on here. I actually have some really good organic uh, Coffee that I've cold brewed and this has the grounds in here also It's a very fine kind of espresso ground grind that I do um, And it's an organic free trade coffee all the goodness. So I factored this volume into the uh, recipe this is my goat milk, farm fresh goat milk that's gonna go in there. And for the fragrance, for my cold brew, I have Coffee Bar from Wholesale Supplies Plus. This smells really good, very, very coffee-ish. <laughs> Everything I'd want a coffee scent to smell like. Um, and the description says that it doesn't cause acceleration and it discolors to a light tan color, or a, a medium tan, I guess. It has a 3% vanillin, so it is gonna discolor a little. So the way I'm going to tackle that is for my coffee portion of the fragrance, I am going to do a bottom layer, the majority of it, for my cold brew. I was thinking, you know, coming into summer heat, I was thinking frappuccinos and cold brew and iced coffee. That kind of is my mindset. So anyway, the bottom layer will have my coffee grounds and coffee, and I will just amp up the uh, tan discoloration with this chocolate brown mica from Wholesale Supplies Plus. I'll just put a little of that in there to go with the coffee color theme. And then um, I'll pull off a little uh, for a fluffy like whipped cream top uh, that I will leave unscented so that it'll stay nice and white. And I'll probably do a little titanium dioxide in that just to make the, you know, cream top look very white. <laughs> I like cream in my coffee, so I always think about cream. When I think of coffee, I think of cream. So that's what's going on today. I'm going to get uh, the rest of my ingredients that we're going to blend in here together. My lye solution is cooling, and I'll tell you how I prep that in a minute, and uh, we'll get moving forward. All right, so I get asked a lot about how I prep my lye, and I figured I'd bring you along. <laughs> I'm not halfway through, but I started, and I'm like, oh no, I should film this. So What's in here is very cold. I get it, I keep my jug in the refrigerator, distilled water that I've dissolved a tablespoon of cane sugar in. And then that is my Tussa silk fibers that I just snip up into little tiny bits on top. So this is sugar water and silk fibers. It's what we've got right here. And the measurements, so this is for, of course, the cold brew. So I have my cold brew and coffee grounds off to the side that I've weighed out. So factoring that into the volume. And then I have my little container here that I'm gonna fill with goat milk, factor that into the volume. <laughs> so let's go backwards. Here is the amount of lye, sodium hydroxide that I need for this recipe today. This is that amount plus an ounce. I always like to shy you know, on the side of caution. So whatever volume of lye you're using, you need to use at least that much liquid to mix with it. And I like to go a little above. So, you know, if this was 10 ounces, this would be 11 ounces. So that's how I mix my lye. And then the rest of the volume of the water or the liquid I can use in goat milk and coffee, which this is empty, but it will have goat milk in it. So. The sugar's already dissolved. I got the little silk fiber fluffs in here, and I'm gonna go ahead and add my lye to the water portion. Now, of course, this is for the milk in oil method. If you're gonna do all uh, goat milk 100%, you would have frozen goat milk, and that's a different process, which I can bring you along. I think I've done that before on film, but I'll do it again in the future. But today I'm doing milk and oil because of the coffee, and I've just been enjoying that. So there's a little bit of lye left in there. I like to stir right away so it doesn't get uh, chunks. If you pour it in your water and walk away before you stir it and it dissolves, it can get like clumpy, and you can stir it out. But So I like to stir those crystals until I don't feel any more grit before I pull my spatula out, and I'll get the rest of this in here. And of course you want to stand back and or have a mask on because the fumes are not fun to huff. <laughs> Ask me how I know. Yeah, so lie, you just want to be cautious. I like to use my stainless steel pot to mix in because um, it's not breakable. Um, I have mixed in Pyrex before. I don't have a big issue with that, but um, I love my little stainless steel pots. So uh, 
this is all mixed it's fully dissolved and it's not going to run fully clear because of the silk fibers but you can see that those silk fibers are all melted they just dissolve almost immediately um, if you have trouble getting your silk fibers to melt in your hot lye water snip them up into tiny little snippets and they will melt a lot faster that's one way to do it um, and if you're dealing with all goat milk in the frozen cubes it's a whole other um, way to add silk then but so this is how I'm doing it today so here is my lye water now that I have that all mixed I'll let it cool a little bit and I will add my sodium lactate in here I don't like to add it when it's super hot um, I don't know I read that years ago in my early soaping to wait till the lye cooled down some people add sodium lactate straight to the oils you could do that too but I will also be putting sodium lactate in here and this is my little magical lye pot so let me get the rest of the stuff prepped and we'll come back and get to making soap. So I'm almost ready to get my additives in the oils, but I thought I'd bring you along and show you what I'm going to do with my coffee and grounds here um, is go ahead and add my mica to that rather than adding it to the soap. It'll just save me some blending and we'll just get that right in there. So this is a, just a little teaspoon measure. It's not going to take much because the fragrance discolors and the coffee obviously is brown. So I'm just going to go ahead and blend my mica right on in here and that'll just save me a step later on. So now that I got that done, let's come over here and add my additives, my dry additives, which is two tablespoons of kale and clay and two tablespoons of colloidal oats. And go ahead and get the goat milk in there. I want that in everything for sure. We'll get that blended up and let it sit while my lye water finishes cooling. All right, it's been a couple of minutes. I just, I just like to give my dry ingredients time to just fully absorb into the, you know, oils in here and smooth it out. So I just feel like it makes a smoother finished bar. So here is the lye that we prepped. It's got the silk and I did add the sodium lactate, so it's all ready to go. And everything is, you know, you can kind of tell. Um, I used to be really stringent about taking the temperature, but my soap studio is cold and I touch this and I touch this and they both feel room temperature, so I'm good with it. I'm not a super stickler on temperature like I used to be. Um, but that just comes after, you know, years of practice. If you're a beginner soaper, I would say, you know, go ahead and stick with your thermometer until you really get a feel for it. So I'm just going to get this up to emulsion and then pour off my little whipped cream topping and then I'll add the fragrance and the coffee. Smells good. I am a coffee lover. <laughs> I don't drink coffee first thing in the morning. Um, as I get older, I think it's hard on the metabolism. It raises your cortisol levels. And so I drink uh, green tea and turmeric in the morning. And then about, you know, 10 or so, I like to have a cup of coffee. And I'll put collagen powder in there and, you know, make it really good. But um, I do love my coffee. I love the smell of coffee. I love going into, you know, mom and pop coffee houses. I just think it's really wonderful. <laughs> so that is looking like emulsion here. Just making sure. All right, that looks good. I'm gonna pour off a little bit, not too much, just enough to make a nice little whip topping. And I will add my titanium titanium dioxide in there all right and let's go ahead here is my fragrance golly this smells nice I'm going to put just a teeny bit because it did say tan but you know I just put a little in there hopefully hopefully that won't affect my whipped cream color too much all right and here is my cold brew grounds and mica slurry the whole business Pop that in there. Good stuff. Okay, I'm gonna blend this up to probably a nice medium trace because I want those coffee grounds to suspend. I certainly don't want them to sink to the bottom of this soap, so a good trace is a good thing on coffee soap.
Well, I've been blending this for, you know, about a minute or two here, and I can tell you the nice thing is this is not a fast accelerating fragrance, so that's already getting a plus from me, and it still smells great here, but, you know, you never can tell the scent until you get on the other side of the bar. But so far, this thing is behaving beautifully. It's the next morning and I cannot wait to get in here. It smells great to me. It's really funny because if you look up uh, this soap coffee bar on Wholesale Supplies Plus website and read the reviews, uh, most cold process soap makers agree that it behaves really well in soap, but it got really mixed reviews on the fragrance. I think people are very particular about their coffee scents. I think it smells great, but some people really didn't like it, so, you know, that's one of those things, until we get smell-o-vision, kind of just have to go on the descriptions alone, but I'm loving the smell of this today, and I've worked with this scent before. After the cure, it's really nice, too, so let's get it out of the mold. It's not a lot going on on the inside, but just, you know, all that goodness, the coffee. Can you really go wrong with coffee? I don't know. I'm thinking no is the answer. Look at that, big gorgeous slab of soap and you can see the coffee grounds suspended really nice in there. Let's get this thing cut and see what we've got. into cutting the bars with my lovely Olga. Just love her. She has been such a delight to work with. So I am going to put these with the little sugar pearl side down. I just decided at the last minute because, you know, when you go to a coffee shop, they put sprinkles on your coffee and I had them and I'm like, you know, let's just put them on there. So put those little tiny there. I got them in the uh, wedding decorating aisle of the grocery store. They're just little sugar pearls is what those are on top. And Let's get this cut. All right. So I love the little, just the gentle swirly top and there it is. Simple, beautiful. 
I think they smell great. Kind of loving these. All right, we'll get to the next loaf. And I just wanted to say, um, I watched this. So last night I put the wooden lid on my loaf mold and put a blanket over it and walked away for a while, came back and checked it, and it started to get very, very hot. So I took the blanket and the lid off and let it cool down for a minute, and then I just put the wooden lid on. So this did go through gel phase, but if I hadn't come down and checked on it, it might have overheated. And I'm not exactly sure what the culprit is for the overheating on this. Uh, just a combination of things but anyway it did get very hot in the mold of course I'm coming into warmer weather here in the soap studio so it's not as cold as it normally is that may be a factor also so just a word to the wise I like to go through gel phase but it does mean that I have to keep an eye on things and make sure they don't get too hot um, some people do the oven method and that works out great because that's you know obviously a very consistent temperature but I just like to work down here in my studio so I have my blankets that I throw over and take off as needed I love these they're simple but I just I'm loving them my husband's gonna love this too I figured I'd show you what I do with these end pieces. So on the one side I have the shallow cut and these are about two ounces and I bundle these up in packs of four and send them, sell them as soap end bundles but then I end up with this sort of half size bar at the end and so what I do is I cut it to make another two ounce slice for my soap end bundle and then also I, now I have like a quarter size and I'll cut this in half and make little sample bars and I set, I send out free samples with all of my soap orders when you order online so let me see it's a little tricky to get it right down the middle alright so now I've got these two little thin slices and I come in here and literally run it through so there's a couple of little soap samples and then for the top I come through again whoops uh, it's not really a good angle but I just run through on the string and then these are let me weigh one these are about half ounce little soap samples that go out with all my orders so that's what I do with those odd end pieces I make soap samples <laughs> 